السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الذي لا إله سواه الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وسبحانه وتعالى علو كثيرا والحمد لله سبحانه وتعالى حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وبعظيم سلطانه والصلاة والسلام على نبيه الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الصالحين الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين الله مكتبنا منهم آمين The imperfection of the nafs and the perfection of the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala that would lead me to talk amongst other things that you have in your summary to talk about this nafs and the ilm of the nafs and that that ilm of the nafs is another very essential component uh, of ilm that will insha'Allah ta'ala uh, help us in the quest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by providing us again as we mentioned earlier awakening and then insha'Allah ta'ala momentum and energy as we continue and I need to know my nafs I need to know my nafs because as we have learned before and we continue to learn if there is any hurdle the major hurdle the major hijab and veil between the qalb and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the nafs is the nafs shaytan himself al-la'een operates through the nafs that's why many ulama rahimahullah ta'ala say that the lemma of the nafs precedes the lemma of the shaytan or the haraka I'm sorry of the nafs of the, of the nafs precedes the intervention of shaytan that shaytan watches for the nafs and the movement of the nafs and the weakness of the nafs if shaitan observes that the harakah of the nafs, then and only then shaitan unleashes his whispers and his attacks. And if he sees, of course, the qalb as a nafs, of course, then that becomes the most fertile ground, the most inviting ground to shaitan into our qulub, because our qulub have become nufus. And the state of our nufus, as is summarized by many of our ulama, al-amilun, al-arifun, rahmahullah ta'ala, and as one reflects on this, one sees definitely the veracity of this system. And that our nufus are different. They have different manifestations and states and phases. And we begin with the lower ones. There is a nafs whose traits and characteristics and sifat are bahimi. The bahimi nafs. And why bahimi nafs? Uh, because the defining characteristics of this nafs, of this self, of this nafs, are bahimi like. And if we look at what are the main characteristics that satisfy a behema, that make a behema feel pleasure, and feel delight, and feel satisfied. And when we look at that, we find that they are, again, as you know, eating, and drinking, and sleeping, and copulating. Copulating is a word, a polite word for um, uh, sexual intercourse. These are the main characteristics of the behemoth. 
And they say, Rahmanullah Ta'ala, if we were to be exposed the haqiqa of our nufus, in other words, what we see externally is more symbolic of what we are, but what we really are is not seen by the naked eye, but by the eye of the qalb. If that haqiqa of what we are would be exposed to us, then some of us would found that our nafs is a, as Imam al-Ghazali said, is a pig. For example, or he said is a wild dog. A ferocious, predatory wild dog. Or a shaitan, in the form of a shaitan. And these, those, he doesn't look at them as symbols. Those are the haqiqah of what we are. Sometimes. And thus, a human person whose focus in life, whose pursuits in life, and consequently the time and the energies he or she spends in this pursuit, determines the state of his or her nafs. If he pursues eating and sleeping and drinking and copulating, and that is the major uh, focus of his or her life, then that person's nafs is a behemi nafs. My nafs, then if it is like that, is a behemi nafs. And I perhaps need to remind myself and my dear brothers and sisters that sometimes we take that and we, and we actualize it in, in, in a structure of a family. Huh? And then you have a family of Baha'im in the haqiqah, in the haqiqah of things, whose pursuits are these elements, are these ends. And we work so hard and we find jobs and we study Many times, because of those nufus in us that we are, the aim is what? More eating in different sophisticated ways. <clears throat> global markets and global economy, part of which is, in my judgment, I can see more of the world becoming more and more bahimi, civilizationally speaking. And Rasulullah spoke about that, subhanAllah, 14 centuries ago, about global markets. Yes, he did. He said, Min alamat is that the markets become nearer to each other in the, in the world. To the extent that even the wife will work in business with her husband, in trade with her husband. He said it 14 centuries ago. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tataqarabu al-aswaq. La taqumu al-sa'atu hatta tataqarabu al-aswaq. Markets come nearer to each other. And so on. So, and we built up such a culture. And we work so hard so that many times we have more of that on the table and at home and around us and different types of beddings, and you remember those things that I mentioned to you, then we are interested after that in this type of bed, and that type of bed, and water bed, and feather bed, and, and ila ghayri dhalik, and, and sophisticate the means by which to attain that. And then we work so hard so that at the weekend we do what? What do people do and on the weekend? What do, they, what do we want to nourish at the weekend? I have to get some rest. I have to have fun. I have, I have worked hard for what? So that at the weekend I do what? And I do not ridicule anybody. You ridicule only yourselves. I ridicule only myself. If you do, if we do, then we're forgetting uh, the, the objective behind this. It's not the others, it's me. I work all the weekend so that at the end of the weekend... I relax doing what? Eating, sleeping, and drinking, and copulating. Especially in the world now with the global culture of freedom of the self. And part of that copulating, you know, has become the most haram type. And then the means to attain that have been sophisticated. And have, been, have become part of the culture. Part of the civilized culture even. For what? For more of that, and you give it 
course, very resonant names and adjectives. And I do that for so that the weekend I do more of that. And then I work so hard so that I have vacation. At the end of the year, I have vacation to do what? We go for vacation to do what in vacation? Basically, the major characteristics, some have other characteristics, but the major characteristics is to have fun. Fun means what? Can you have fun without eating? They say, and drinking, and different types of drinks, and, and of course, fun, you know, copulating, and the means that accentuate that, and that lead to that of bars, and of, and of clubs, and of discotheques, and of, uh, and of clubs, and, and, and of kada even professional clubs, centered around that, to fulfill that, in sometimes, either we say, prolific ways, superfluous ways, or excessive ways, that cultivate, and nurture, and feed, and animate, this behemoth in me. We all need to eat indeed, and sleep and drink, and have, and 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 um, and um, multiply, but we nurture the nest until that becomes basically the average concern, the major concern, and for some the only concern. The nest that nest does not become is no more a mount that you ride in your journey of your qalb to Allah, your qalb is not riding your nafs and guiding your nafs where it goes, but your nafs is ri- your nafs, forgive me, my nafs is riding my heart, the horse is riding me, hiding, the, 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 the horse is riding on the, on the rider, The horse is riding on the rider. Whereas it should be the qalb riding the nafs. And when the rider and the horse stop to graze, that beautiful parable that was shared with us with Brother Ali three years ago, four years ago, remember that? Then when the horse stops, when the rider stops and takes a break to, to, to eat and the horse to graze, would the rider graze with the horse? Go eat what the horse eats? You would be foolish. So the nafs uh, would, decide, would decide what the rider is nourished like, unfortunately. And that is the behemoth. And then we have indeed sometimes a civilization of Baha'im. A Bahimi, what I call a Bahimi civilization, whose traits and characteristics are centered around that. Then, of course, sometimes, as you know, as is fact in life, to attain more of those Bahimi traits and characteristics and satisfactions, we use what sometimes? We use force. We use aggressive means. We take over territory. We take over companies. We take over factories. We destroy the competition. We express anger in this way. We are angry. And that is a nafs that finds satisfaction and realization through that. Sometimes to do more of those to attain more of those Bahimi values and characteristics, but sometimes it finds, until it finds actually satisfaction in the very act of empowerment, in the very act of anger, in the very act of superiority, in the very act of attacking, in the very act of taking away. That's, those are predatory traits. Sabu'i traits, the nafs becomes Sabu'i nafs. Some call it Kalbi nafs. Meaning the wild dog, not the, not the domesticated dog. Sabu'i. 
then if an individual, if I find satisfaction in anger, an excessive anger, if I find satisfaction, I repeat, I, let's begin here, if I find satisfaction in anger, and I show anger, and especially excessive anger, then I have traits of a sabu'inafs. And the more I realize that anger, the more I have those subway traits, predatory traits. Subway may sound nice. Kalbi traits. Because subway in the Arabic language not only means lying, actually, but it means actually a predator. And that's the aggressive part in us. The aggressive part in us, when actualized, then we are actualizing, we are obeying, we are prostrating ourselves to a wild dog. As Imam Ghazali would put it, rahimahullah ta'ala. Now I look at myself. How much of that satisfaction do I have? How often time do I get excessively angry and entertain that anger and base my, base my acts upon that anger? How long does it continue in me? The degree of that determines the degree of that predatory self within me, the nafs within me. And I need to know that because, obviously, I do not want to be a predator. I do not want to be a behemoth. I do not want to be as happy as a cow. I do not want to be as happy as a hyena. I don't want that. Yes, I am happy, one says. No, you're not happy. Yes, I am happy. Oh, I'm sorry. You are happy as a cow. You say that to yourself, you don't say that to others. But know that, so that we're not fooled by others. So that we're not drawn by that which others do and don't know. You know. Indulging in in things that are dangerous liaisons and dangerous attractions of the nafs. And that look now, that's the civilized world. To be civilized is, is to do those things. To walk naked. To cultivate the nafs that is behemi. And to eat and drink and to eat and drink and entertain. Okay, what's the difference between me then and a cow and a pig? I said to you many times before, reminding myself first, Allah, what is the difference between a human being and forgive me, and a stone or a cow? Is it the way we look? In essence, in the haqiqah. Huh? In the haqiqah, no. Why? Why? Because it is well established that the same stuff of which we're made, they're made of. The same atoms, same material that makes the cow and the pig, khalqullah, if alu is the one that makes the human being externally. Externally. You know, have you ever seen a surgery of, of, of uh, surgeons removing, removing the face of a person? Have you seen that? Have you seen that? Of course you're a doctor, you... Doctors know that. Maybe you have not seen that. But I have seen that. Removing the very face, the skin, underneath, it looks monstrous. Just a skin deep. Subhanallah. Monstrous. Ugly. Terrible. Just that skin. We're not different from cows and pigs because of the atomic structure. They're the same stuff. The only way that makes us different physically in complexion and in structure is what? The way the atoms are organized in their molecules. That's all. The angles. Believe it or not. That's all. Same stuff. 
That cannot make us different. That's not the essence of our difference. That's why Allah in the Quran says, مَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ إِنْ تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثَ وَتَطْرُكُ يَلْهَثَ That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أُولَئِكَ كَلْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلُّ That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعْلَ مِنْهُمُ الْقِرَدَةَ وَالْخَنَازِيرِ All of these Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicating to us that there are some human beings whose essence is like these animals that he mentioned. Pigs and monkeys and, and dogs and, and cattle. Like cows and llamas and, and sheep and camels and so on and so forth. My nafs. I must know my nafs. My nafs. I must know this nafs. Because the object of tezkiya is what? The object of tezkiya is what? The nafs. In essence, it's not the qalb. Because the qalb is naturally divine, heavenly. The grip of the nafs over the qalb. That's what I want to free when I say tazkiyatul al-qalb. That's why we usually say tazkiyatul nafs. I don't think I've ever used tazkiyatul qalb. And I can develop a predatory community, predatory family, predatory culture, predatory civilization and the predatory nafs having now attained through power and through aggression and through anger individually or collectively that which is external now sometimes it feels the need and the urge and the next level of decadence the next sub-level of decadence now is to own the hearts of man, the minds of man, to control those themselves, to be lord of man, to be god of man, to be the ultimate ruler of man, the legislator for man. And that is the nafs that is shaitani. The nafs that is shaitani. You know, the traits and characteristics of shaitani, in addition to what I have just said, is kibr. Any time I show kibr, vanity and arrogance. That is a trait of my nafs that is shaitani. If I show kibr, my nafs has characteristics of shaitan. Aina. I delight also in that and I accept it. Some people go to school, there are some schools that teach quote-unquote manners of how to be, to look aristocratic. Nada, sophisticated word for mutakabbir, for ja'adari. Say, ja'adari. Another word for that. Vanity, arrogance. Shaitan showed arrogance, showed vanity. First crime against humanity, isn't it? The crime of kibr. Sowing animosity between people. When one goes and talks ill about some other person, that's a shaitani nafs in action. When someone Backbites, that's a shaitani nafs in action. When shum, someone is ostentatious, hmm? likes to be seen by others, that's a shaitani nafs in action. And so on. Until we develop, and if that's where we grow, and the family is like that, then you have family of shaitan. And we have then a community of shayateen, culture of shayateen, and a civilization of shayateen. Shaytani civilization in the haqiqa, not in appearance. Not in haqiqa, not in appearance. Appearances do not count as we have established. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa ashkalikum, walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum, says Rasulullah Allah does not concern himself, does not look at your appearances. 
He looks at your kulub. What qalb is this? What nafs is this, my dear brothers and sisters? SubhanAllah, I read a story. What was it called? In, you know, in, in, in a book by lawyers. They call I think, the Devil's Dictionary or something like that. A quote from that. And in that quote, the, this is the following story. That when God created man, and the devil did what he did, and appeared or from him what had appeared, then when he created man and wanted to send God, wanted to send man on earth, then the devil addressed God and said, um, God, you, you know, you're sending a man on earth and, and um, man needs to live, me needs laws. Indicating, you know, can I, can I do that? This is the way they go in their story. So it is said there, وَتَعَلُ اللَّهُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ عَلُوًا كَثِيرًا This is metaphor. And God says, you wretched, wicked being, you the one who is the devout enemy of man, claim to want to be good for man and to want good for man. You want to claim to make laws for man. The devil answers, I, I, I beg your pardon. Can you imagine that? No, 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 that's not what I meant, God. I meant that you let man make his own laws. And God said, so be it. <clears throat> In the devil's dictionary, written by secular lawyers, some secular lawyers. It is, I found it very interesting. I read it many years ago. Subhanallah, wa shahida shahidun min ahliha. Wa shahida shahidun min ahliha. Wa shahida shahidun min ahliha. The witness came from her very family. You know, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And when the evidence came from the people of the woman who claimed that he had uh, done injustice to her. وَشَهِدَ شَاهِدٌ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا Subhanallah. To the extent that there is an acknowledgement that to give man power to legislate and to make laws by himself, for himself, is an act of shaitan. That's what that story is telling. Interestingly, that's how I read it. شَهِدَ شَاهِدٌ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا Subhanallah. So when we entertain those things, uh, that nafs has those tendencies. And because at one point in the undergrowth and the underdevelopment of the human desire, the human desires always more and more, and the more you give man, the more man wants until it wants to own not the human beings externally, physically and geographically and economically and militarily, but then, it, after that, when it attains that, it wants more than that. It wants the very heart of man. That's why tyrants, actually the essence of a tyrant is that he wants to be loved. But they can't give him love because he doesn't have the traits and characteristics for that, so he does that with Power. And many of them delude themselves that the people love them. Isn't it true? The authoritarian people and the totalitarian people and the tyrants, Tira, Torat, in Arabic it's an interesting same word. Universal. Tarot. Actually, it, it is somehow a desire to be loved. That you give them your hearts, that you really love them and you revere them. They can't get that, they are deluded, they want it by force. And sometimes it is done by force, sometimes it is done by makr. More hidden, 
not obvious tyranny, but by makr, delusion and an illusion, and diplomacy, and, and then handing in certain certain things to draw the cow, and then and then later on to draw the predator, and and then to get the heart given. That's a nafs that is shaitani. Where do I stand of these? How much time and effective time do I spend in satisfying the values and the urges and the dictates of these levels of nafs? Luckily, there is a fourth state of a nafs that is called the nafs al-mala'iki. Al-nafs al-mala'iki, the angelic type of a nafs. An angel's satisfaction as you know, my dear brothers and sisters, is in what? Is in eating? In sleeping? In copulating? In aggression? In conspiracy? In arrogance? In superiority complexes? In what? In nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In ibadah of 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how they experience their happiness, an angelic happiness. And somehow, alhamdulillah, it is well that universally people agree that uh, the best state to be is angelic. Even the tyrants believe that as human beings. The angelic tendencies in us. If in us, inside of me, I feel those bursts and momenta of wanting to be abd of Allah of salah of dhikr, of khalwa of fikr, of dua of salah ala nabi, of sawm of sadaqah, of forgiveness of charity of helping others of preferring others over me of humility, of modesty of patience of gratefulness if there are those, then that's an indication that I have also, alhamdulillah, traits of a nafs that is malaiki. To what extent? That's a different question. To what extent? That's a different question, my dear brothers and sisters. Rasulullah in one afar, in one text, I think it is, I believe it is authentic, I don't know, but the, the dua is... Uh, is, is like this, uh, subhanallah. Allahumma ja'al khashyataka akhwaf al-ashya'i indi waj'al hubbaka ahab al-ashya'i ilay waqta'anni waqta'anni hajat al-dunya بالشوق إلى لقائك وقطع عني حاجات الدنيا بالشوق إلى لقائك وإذا أقررت أعين أهل الدنيا من دنياهم فأقرر عيني من عبادتك النفس المطمئنة النفس الملائكية فأقرر عيني من عبادتك فأقرر عيني من عبادتك The text says what means Ya Allah Please grant me خشية of you, of you Fear of you Awe of you Awe for you Such that there is nothing more fearful To me Than you And grant me Your hub Your love such that, such that there is nothing more beloved to me than you. And please, Ya Allah, sever, sever my need for dunya. Sever my need for dunya by, by, Connecting me to you 
through longing for you. See this, how that is done? Let my concern for this dunya and my need for this dunya be severed by attaching the other rope. Longing for you. If there is shock for Allah, the ties are severed. And he says then, and then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what means? And Ya Allah, when you refresh the eyes of the people of dunya, with their dunya, please refresh mine with your ibadah. With your ibadah. Nafsun malaikiyah that finds its solace, its peace, its joy, its happiness in that. فَإِذَا أَقْرَرْتَ أَعْيُنَ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ دُنْيَاهُمْ فَأَقْرِرْ عَيْنِي مِنْ عِبَادَتِكَ نَفْسٌ مَلَائِكِيَةٌ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَسْأَلُكَ نَفْسًا مُطْمَئِنَّةً تؤمن بلقائك وترضى بقضائك وتقنع بعطائك سيده صلى الله عليه وسلم يا الله grant me and teach us therefore grant me a nafs that is at peace in اطمئنان تؤمن بلقائك who is faithful in coming to you in meeting you and who is pleased with your decree. Pleased with your decree. Good or bad. Pleased, not only bearing and forbearing. Pleased with your decree. Good or bad. Hard or easy. Prosperity or adversity. Give me that nafs. And he had it, sallallahu alayhi wa He's teaching us. And that his ubudiyah being expressed. صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم و نفسا مطمئنة تؤمن بلقائك وترضى بقضائك وتقنع بعطائك and that نفس that has قناعة contentment with what you ever give نفس ملائكية نفس مطمئنة and if I find solace in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, if I'm attracted to that, if I'm drawn by that, if I miss it when it is not there, all of those are indicative of, alhamdulillah, the elements of a nafs that is malaiki. And thus, the ilm of the nafs, of what type of nafs I have, is important. Sometimes I reckon that we can quantify nowadays and study the psychology of my nafs by, and I can find out quantifiably what type of nafs I have. I can actually have someone or myself, you know, time, times that I spend effective times, uh, effective times, or do they call them also sometimes? Uh, time that you spend with your family, they call it quality time. How much quality time I spend in searching for eating and eating and drinking, searching for copulating means and ways and doing that, and sleeping. How much effort and quality time I spend in searching for, attaining and, and experiencing those. Versus, how much time I spend in pursuit of, attainment of, an expression of that which a malak is satisfied with. And I can time myself. And in this, in this approximation, then I can discover in some way whether I minus is a combination of the first three or a combination of the first three and the fourth one, and which one dominates? Then the one that dominates characterizes the basic identity of my nafs. Then I have to do something about it. If you asked our ulama, rahmahullah ta'ala, and truly so, as they discuss this matter, let's say from 
when they approached it from uh, the perspective of the qulub al qalbul marid wal qalbul mayit wal qalbul wal qalbul salim wal qalbul sahih when they approach it from that there is a qalb that is mayit heart that is dead and a heart that is dead therefore is a heart that is overwhelmed by the grasp the, the grasp of the grasp of the grasp of the lower three states of witness completely suffocated mayit and shaitan resides therein um, at liberty mayit and qalb that is sahih salim mashallah is a qalb uh, who has completely disengaged from the nafs and it is synonymous to an nafsul mutma'inna an nafsul mutma'inna and the qalb become almost the same entity and then there is a qalb that is marid it's neither dead mayit nor nor salim nor fully sahih that is fed by two sources one source of hypocrisy and of kufr and of wickedness and one source of salama, of iman, of taqwa, of mahabba for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a qalb that is marib. And that qalb inclines towards the force that is stronger at a time. And they tell us, our teachers, our ulama, rahmahullah ta'ala, and truly so, that most of us as Muslims have qalb that is marib. Meaning the coefficient of the nafsu al-bahimiyya wa nafsu al-sabu'iyya wa nafsu al-shaytaniyya their coefficient is larger than the coefficient of al-nafsu al-malaikiyya that's why tazkiyya tazkiyya therefore becomes what? becomes mechanisms the methodology and the path and the process by which we cultivate a nafs al malaikiyah and we dispense of a nafs al shaytaniyah and the excesses of the nafs al bahimiyah and al sabuhiyah that's the essence now of Tazkiyah if I don't know my nafs I cannot help my nafs if I misdiagnose my nafs I cannot help my nafs I still remember many times I think some of you may may have also experienced that some, some people some Muslims Allah hafizamullah and Allah forgive us and forgive them all uh, who smoke smoke cigarettes smoking cigarettes al-arjah fil aqwali annahu haram smoking cigarettes al-arjah fil aqwali annahu haram the evidence that, that is most weighing of the opinions among the, and, uh, in view of the opinions of the ulama is that it is haram anyways and I used to talk to a few persons, and this one in particular was a family member, a husband to some family member. Overall, overall, what we call a nice person, what we call you know, a gentle person, and so on, uh, in that cultural sense. And he smoked so bad. And I still remember as a young, younger than a uh, young person, I used to you do that and stop and, and you should stop it's not good for you and it's very difficult to stop and so on and he used all his time and said no 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 really if I knew it was bad for me I would stop when I want and he really said it with quietness he was a calm person he was not an aggressive person he says really it's not bad for me and he was in his 30s highly educated I, it doesn't hurt me if I knew it would hurt me I would stop when I wanted to stop I think you know the rest of the story when he wanted to stop he couldn't stop he has always misdiagnosed himself 
and wanted to be at the same time the patient and the doctor. I should not misdiagnose my nurse. Remember what uh, it was also said? ما أعز الله عبدا بعز أعز من من أن يبدي له ذل نفسه ما أعز الله عبدا أعز له من أن يبدي له ذل نفسه وما أذل الله عبدا أذل له من أن يحجب عنه ذل نفسه There is no more is, no more exaltation and upliftment. And there is no more loftier of a, of, of a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a abd than when he unveils for him or her the lowliness of his or herness. And there is no zul, no zul, no lowliness, no debasement. Lower than and worse than Allah making the abd unaware of, veiling the abd from the lowliness of his nafs. I must begin to acknowledge that, my dear brothers and sisters. Man arad al فإن العزة لله جميعا العزة ليست في النفس العزة خارج النفس العزة بالخروج عن النفس عزة is not in the نفس عزة is in Allah with Allah عزة is by exiting from the نفس not by being with the نفس in the نفس and by the نفس and I must not my نفس my dear brothers and sisters, that will lead us, of course, to realize the consequence of these lower states of the nafs, the zunub, the ilm of the zunub. And in conclusion for today, inshallah ta'ala, I think at this point we can already come to the conclusion that I do not need freedom of my nafs. I need freedom from my nafs. Remember that. And we shall continue, inshallah, on the subject of ilm tomorrow as well, bi'ibnillah. And remember to summarize what you have learned. I mean by that summary, your reflections as to how you find this in you, how you see it, how you the difficulties before, now, the path in front of you, your reflections on this, inshallah ta'ala, that you must do, you must do, everyone, though we'll have uh, only one or two or so to do that summary, but the intent is that it is itself muraja'ah. Remember, ilm will not benefit if it is not recorded, and if it is not learned, and if it is not reviewed, and if it is not memorized. They say, al-ilmu firras. ليس في الكراس but العلم في الكراس قبل أن يدخل الراس they say علم knowledge is in the ras in the head not in the not in the uh, in the notebook well before it goes into the ras in the, in the head it must pass by the notebook because if you don't nobody is الإمام الشافعي and الإمام الشافعي wrote علم and Imam Ahmed who memorized, it is said, uh, it is he who memorized, I think, over 600,000 ahadith with their isnad. The Quran, of course, without Quran, they don't even begin these things. Who said, without recording ilm, what would we be? Ish kunna lawla kitabat al-ilm. قال رحمه الله تعالى كلمة إيش كنا لولا كتابة العلم رحمه الله تعالى you write علم you review علم مراجعة العلم that part of the daily diet of علم يحفظ العلم sometimes to memorize علم 
than to understand ilm, to practice ilm, and to share ilm. أول العلم السماع ثم الحفظ ثم الفهم ثم العمل ثم النشر. These are the stages of ilm. So I ask my brothers and sisters to do that for the sake of our own sake of learning. Keep repeating the ilm. If you don't memorize it, it's gone. And sometimes, sometimes, why do we have difficulties in doing things? Because we don't have ilm. So, no, I learned that. You learned it. I learned it, but I forgot it. I learned it once in a majlis. Yes, I did learn that in a majlis. But then I have never repeated it. I have never memorized it. I have never reviewed it. it never, I never gave it time to sink into my qalb. So that when an opportunity comes, spontaneously, it is, rec- it is recalled to my memory as I face a situation. And then it comes with a momentum to require from me to act. But I learned it, but because I do not review it and I do not memorize it, it will not be present, it will not be handy when needed. When needed. When needed like when I leave from here isn't it true حفظكم الله my dear brothers and sisters and remember dua for yourselves and for all your brothers and sisters for tawfiq inshallah ta'ala wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad ala alihi wa sallam